There's this weird thing in the Old Testament where every nine chapters or so, the Israelites will stray from the right path, start worshiping other gods, making high places, and, you know, just generally incurring God's wrath. And, and of course, this happens because when you've got an omnipotent character in your book, you have to constantly sideline him. In the actual history that they're often loosely documenting, it's super duper obvious that the Jews didn't have the omnipotent creator of the universe on their side. So much in the same way that Professor X always manages to get himself kidnapped or imprisoned or something before the climax of the story, the Bible's authors always had to write God out by making them all like harumphy about the high places and shit. But the end result is that you've got these crazy forgetful worshippers constantly getting like six years from the last broadly witnessed miracle and going, ah, I bet this golden calf God could kick Jehovah's ass. And, and I remember reading that and thinking it seemed like a really unrealistic way for a group of people to act. But I read that book way back in 2013. And back then I had nowhere near as much experience trying to convince Democrats to fucking vote. You know, look, basically the whole time we've been doing this show, the shit that just happened in Texas was kind of our worst case scenario. And people wrote to us even before Lucinda started doing This Week in Misogyny, asking why we talked so much about abortion on an atheism show. And our response was always the same. That's the gate that they're marching on. And when the fucking bad guys are at the East Gate, we're going to be inordinately concerned with the eastern side of the city. But a lot of people had grown complacent. They saw Roe v. Wade, they saw all the slings and arrows that had withstood over the last 48 years, and they thought it was impregnable. And then, last week, it came crumbling down, and everybody who's watched them fire one missile after another at it for nearly five decades is looking at this big-ass breach in the wall and going, well, how the fuck did that happen? And, and I look, I get it. 1973 is a long time ago. Barely 20% of Americans are old enough to even remember a pre-Roe world, and, and far fewer are old enough to have been affected by it. And sure, the, the efforts to overturn it started three minutes after the decision was announced, and sure, they've been ongoing ever since, and sure, they're so well-funded that they have their own movies and TV shows and shit, but their failure was so consistent that it seemed inevitable. Our archives can amply demonstrate that their efforts were literally laughable much of the time, but now here we are, wondering how that shit was ever funny. And look, as bad as it is, Texas is just the tip of the iceberg. What Texas proves is that we have a Supreme Court that's willing to choose Jesus over precedent and the Bible over the Constitution. I mean, don't get me wrong, if the only thing they ever did was effectively overturn Roe, it would be plenty bad enough, but that was never the end goal. You know, not, not now that they've managed to shove their wedge issue into the gate, the real goal is going to come pouring through. And that goal is nothing short of theocracy. And, and it's not like I have to retreat to some conspiracy theory to defend that claim, right? It sounds hyperbolic, but they say it out loud to anybody who cares to fucking listen. They want their religious beliefs to take precedent over the will of the majority. In fact, at the extremes, they'll tell you it's the nation's only chance at fucking survival. And as insane as it is to try to govern towards the favor of an imaginary deity, that is clearly what's animating five-ninths of the Supreme Court right now, as well as half of America's major political parties. This is going to get worse. We're going to be fighting against the Supreme Court as long as you and I are alive, most likely. Hell, even if we're lucky enough to outlive this iteration of it, I can't imagine anybody listening is going to live long enough to see all their damage undone. And I'm sure if Heath were here, he'd be happy to sum up the reason for that in either six or seven words, depending on whether he uses the contraction or goes with should have. But that's where we are now. Right? There, there, there are two other branches of government that can stand between them and Gilead. But to do that, we need to rely on Democrats voting. And, and I can't think of many propositions I'd be less comfortable staking my future on. Look, I, I'm not trying to depress you, and I apologize if this comes across as hopeless, but I have this terrifying vision of the fucking midterms and all the apathetic bullshit we're bound to hear about the promises Biden didn't keep and the bills this Congress didn't pass and the issues the Democrats didn't prioritize. And I can already hear us screaming, don't you remember 2016? Just the same way that we screamed, don't you remember 2010 back in 2016? And don't you remember 2000 back in 2010? And don't you remember... 1988 and 2000 and don't you remember 1980 and back in 1988 you know maybe i'm wrong you know like maybe it'll be different this time maybe texas will light a fire under our asses maybe we'll have more than six weeks of political memory for once in my fucking lifetime but history sure as hell doesn't suggest it